Good morning, everyone. It's Stephanie with Keller Williams in Morrisville, and I'm joined by Kristen Fesnick, also with Keller Williams, and Tammy Fox. She's with Keller Williams as well, but she is um, very versed in homeschooling, and we wanted to bring her on um, very early on in this time that we're in that's very uncharted waters for most of us with homeschooling and let her talk to you and give you pointers as to what you need to do. Ah, I lost you. You're still there. My screen lost you. Hang on a second. Um, Gotta love technology. Sorry. It's okay. I'm going to try to find you back too because I was jumping over here. Anyway, she is awesome with um, homeschooling and um, does this and has done this for many years. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Tammy, and we'll just ask you questions um, along the way. Okay, great. I'm Tammy Fox and I've homeschooled 20 plus years. And I just want to say out of the gate what you guys are experiencing is not the homeschooling that I've done for 20 years. Um, I've seen a term called crisis schooling because suddenly your kids are home, they've got assignments, and you may never have even pulled up some of this technology that the teachers are saying your kids need to use. Um, I know my two sons have Chromebooks and I've never used a Chromebook. So if you're in that category, you're not alone. Just take it a day at a time and don't freak out that they have all these deadlines. Some teachers are learning right along with you on this technology and I'm sure there's going to be some grace in terms of some of the deadlines they're setting because we've got families out there who may not have great internet and multiple kids. You may only be able to have one child at a time using technology. You may only have one device that they can use um, because most schools don't give elementary kids a Chromebook and you may be just trying to piece together whatever you have. So just take it a day at a time, communicate with your teachers, let them know, you know, we are struggling here. We don't have everything set up technology wise. They will have things in place for that. Um, last night I saw a really sweet question. There's a Facebook group for Hickory where we're talking about homeschooling in this situation with people who've never homeschooled. And there was this sweet mom who is not originally from this country. So English is not her first language and she has a kindergartner. So she is having a hard time even figuring out what she's supposed to be doing. Oh my goodness. So we were really just encouraging her to communicate with the teacher and there may be somebody that can help that is versed in your language that can overcome some of the barriers with communication you're having. So we know there are a lot of people who are really overwhelmed quick. So what kind um, of question do you have for me, Stephanie? Being a mom that's homeschooled for over 20 years with, mm -hmm. with your six kids, tell me, um, is it important to have a specific structure for them or do you just haphazardly do it? Do they need to stay on a structure or tell us a little bit about that? Okay. That's a great question because you can go from being super structured like they had at school to what I would call free ranging where they decide what they want to do when they want to do it. We fall in the middle in my homeschool. We've developed a routine and the way that I've got it, the boys routine starts with getting up in the morning, eat breakfast, get dressed, brush your teeth, make your bed, do whatever I need you to do, whether it's take out trash, do dishes, and then we start school. Well, till you do all those little components, our homeschool day starts somewhere between nine and 9.30. I don't get them up super early because what's the point really? They're gonna be cranky. And they've got all day to do whatever the assignments are. So the structure I developed with them was more, I need you to do these routines because we all need to do these things to start our day. Then here's your schoolwork. Now, some of you have active children, and I'm not gonna just throw boys in the category, there are active girls. Whenever you have a young elementary age child, do a subject and give them a little break where they can go outside, walk around the house if they can't go out in the yard. Movement really helps them. Drink some water. 
then go into that next subject. Resist that urge for them to sit for five hours straight doing work at the computer, because that's a lot for a kid. It's a lot for an adult. And I use meal times kind of as our guide. So the goal with the boys is do your homeschool stuff, be done by lunch, have lunch, and then your afternoon time is for free play or games or whatever. Now, because everybody is getting into this shelter in place situation, you can't use rewards such as go to the park or whatever, but you can have game time. What children really want from their parents is time. They wanna hang out with you. And a really good reward is just say, we'll sit for an hour and play whatever board game you wanna play. We'll work on a jigsaw puzzle together. We'll do a craft. Use something that would speak to them that would seem like a reward, even though you're pretty well confined to most likely your house and your yard. So that's one thing that I, I used was meal times were our guide. Okay. And they get very motivated if it's something fun they wanna do in the afternoon to get that work done. Annette is asking, isn't there usually a curriculum like going to school? And Annette, um, right now, what I'm hearing from a lot of parents is that they're being sent the curriculum from their current schools. Is that right, Tammy? Yes, most schools have in place something for the students for curriculum. What you would want to fill in with, though, is they're probably not sending them things that would be like electives, such as music, yeah. plays. There are so many opportunities out there that they're doing free Broadway plays online. There's do, the Met is doing free operas. You want to expose your kids to a lot of stuff and build them as well-rounded young people. So there have been many times in my homeschool career where the afternoon we were in the house doing stuff, and I would have classical music playing in the background. We would just have this stuff kind of immersed into our home. So while you've got probably a packaged curriculum from the school, you can bring in some fine arts into your, your school and your home to kind of break up the monotony of paperwork. Because let's face it, we don't like to just read and answer questions or watch a video and answer questions. But what I would do with the boys that was just a ton of fun is we would find something they could draw. And, and it would be sitting there and then we'd turn on some classical music and we were engaging different parts of the brain than they're gonna do if they read, regurgitate, take a test, move on. So find unique ways to bring in stuff that's not just that packaged curriculum that your teachers have given you. I noticed um, on the news even this morning and last night, there were um, opportunities like through, I think it was, um, one of the museums downtown where mm -hmm. you could go in and watch and it was where they were showing animals and a possum eating and they were having full-on classes yep. for students and children um, to take and they were free. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good time to take advantage of those as well and things that kids would be enjoying as well. So those are pretty cool. Um, pieces to offer kids for entertainment as well as science pieces sure. to incorporate too. Absolutely. Um, in the way of homeschooling, do you separate the kids or do you have them all in one area? Okay, so I didn't talk a lot about some of my background homeschooling. I have six children with a 15 year age range. So when I had child number six, my daughter was 15. I have one girl and five boys. In the early years, the way our homeschool looked is I sat at one end of the table and the youngest child was close to me, to the right or to the left. And then the others were kind of in a circle around the table. And I could start each one on something that I knew they could carry on with without me and move to the next child. So I usually started with the younger one because the older ones could normally start one subject without me. And we balanced because when you have that many kids and that many math lessons, they can't all do math at the same time, but they can be sitting at the table or in the same room, each one of them doing a different subject. Now, as I have older kids, the two that I have now are 13 and 16. So I have middle school and high school. They're both using an app on the iPad and they're both using Chromebook. 
So what they do is they go to their rooms and they do the work, come to me, show me their progress or ask questions. And that way they can both listen to their videos and not disturb the brother. So okay. some of it is what are the teachers giving them to use? Is it feasible that they can be in the same room being supervised? i um, seeing pictures of families with three or four kids and they've got headsets. So each huh. child has their computer in their lesson, but they're sitting there um, not disturbing one another. So okay. that's one thing that you kind of have to figure out what your kids are able to do. I have an ADD child and I know I'm not the only one. We actually used a science display board to make him a cubicle because okay. he was always interested in everybody else's work around him. And we found if we cut those distractions, he could be at the table with us, but he had to have a shield where he couldn't see. Okay. So that's kind of out of the box thinking. Mm -hmm. But I know there are a lot of people really struggling with figuring out how am I going to get everybody situated with their lessons if they have more than one child. Exactly. And, you know, with me having two grown kids, the mm -hmm. homeschooling piece is, is, something that is quite unique for me to even comprehend. Yeah. Um, so I'm just at a loss as to what to tell clients and friends, even give them suggestions. So you are really enlightening me today on, <laughs> on pieces and things for them to try. Cause I, I'm totally clueless. Right. Getting ready to be a Gigi in, in May is so exciting that I'm like, Oh my goodness. You know, mm -hmm. is she going to homeschool? What is, what is um, my bonus daughter going to do? Mm -hmm. And how are, how are they going to be doing things? And I know we've got a little bit of time to think about those things, but what right. kind of um, suggestions can I give? So you, thank you for enlightening us. Um, is there anything else that you would like to give in suggestions and helpful tips for our viewers today? One thing that people don't think about is when you have a baby and you start teaching them things, you're homeschooling. And as they become toddlers, you're teaching them to be independent. You do potty training. You teach them when they get a little bit bigger to tie their shoe. You read books to them. You engage them. So really and truly, most people don't realize it, but they are homeschooling. And it, when they get to the kindergarten age, then you're making a decision, am I really homeschooling? or are we going to consider other options? And so that's what I encourage people to kind of think back. What have you taught your kids? So you can teach them more. You grow with them. You don't start out teaching algebra to a kindergartner, but there are people right now who are, they've got kids at home doing algebra and they have no clue what to do. Um, in North Carolina, we have the Khan Academy, Khan Academy. So make sure you put that somewhere in our links to them. They have access to tutors online through Khan Academy. So if they have a child that needs help and it's beyond what they can do, there are resources and teachers are sharing that with the people, but you know, may or may not have gotten it all the way to that person who might be struggling. And I've awesome. used Khan Academy for tutoring. It's very effective in breaking down the steps, especially to math. And that's awesome. the one people freak out over high school math. So that's there. Um, for high school biology and chemistry, there are online labs that they can watch. So they may not be able to actually participate in the dissection or the chemistry experiment, but they can watch a teacher do the experiment online and see how it works. At least they're getting some knowledge base until they can get back perhaps to that school. I don't know if they're going to get back this year or not. So I'm being right. optimistic because they're saying May 15th. And the school year does not end May 15th. So I'm being optimistic that our kids will get to get back and do some things because, you know, I feel bad for the seniors. Mm -hmm. They're missing out on that whole spring stuff that seniors do. Right. And, and I have a niece who's a senior. You know, I, my heart goes out to them. These kids were the ones born after 9-11. Yeah. And so their life has so far been bookended by big events in our country that has shifted how we do things. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got a high school senior, just come alongside them and encourage them to do what they've got to do to meet those requirements to graduate, but have some fun. 
make sure they have some life skills. And this can start from young kids on. They need to know how to do things around the house. Don't be afraid to ask them and to teach them how to do exactly. laundry, how to cook, how to balance a checkbook. Prepare them for life after when they grow up and move out, go to college or get a place of their own. And I do see quick little memes about that. I mean, part of having them home all day is include them in what you're doing. Exactly. And if you're working from home, let them see that. Let them understand that we're all doing things differently right now. It's not just them. And we miss seeing our friends too. Exactly. You know, it's, it's so important that they learn the life skills mm -hmm. um, because although we are learning as realtors and other other professions, all professions, mm -hmm. basically, to navigate this socially through right. a computer screen. Uh -huh. We're relying so much on the younger millennials and the ones, and I don't know the name of them, the ones, our kids, your kids age, mm -hmm. um, to, to show us how to do this because they're really good at it. Yeah. Um, that's what they've been doing on their computers, playing the games and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, we're going into a, what we are not used to yes. as far as talking. We're used to picking up our phones and just making a phone call. They're used to doing it this way. So we're, mm -hmm. we're leaning on each other in this time yeah. and we can still communicate face to face through a computer screen and have that, mm -hmm. that one-on-one -on -one but we're also in uncharted territory and they need to understand and realize there is things that they have to do. Yeah. There are things such as balancing a checkbook. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to come up with creative ways to make money and yeah. other ways of doing business and mm -hmm. learn those. Um, so it's, you're right. We've got to, we've got to get to some, very basics and show them those basics mm -hmm. yeah. and share with them what we are doing. Yes. So, um, in 2015, to... Oh, sorry. I'll tell you one more thing before you ask. Oh, go right I, ahead. In 2015, I wrote a book called giving your children wings without losing yours. And it's available yes. as a Kindle book and print. It is about my journey homeschooling. Yay. You got it. Yay. And it talks about routines, teaching your kids life skills, making stuff around the house fun because they will get that mentality that they'll carry through adulthood. If you tell them it's chores and drudgery and you hate it, they're going to bring that with them into adulthood because exactly. most of us have that because we had perfectionists in our background that if you didn't do something right, you redid it and redid it. And so um, I tend to teach my children grace because they are going to make a mistake. I make mistakes. And how can we, we make do. it better the next time? So that book is available as a Kindle. So it's quick download. Um, I write a daily newsletter. And today I encourage people to do family read aloud. And that's something that most of us got away from because of our busy, busy, busy schedules. And read some books based in history where we can see kids in similar situations in terms of Diary of Anne Frank. She hid in a very tiny space for over 700 days, almost two years. Um, Corey Ten Boom's Hiding Place, Little House on the Prairie. Um, little House in the Big Woods talks about, you know, life in a little cabin. And the big winter, they were stuck in the cabin, snowed in with, with snow around the house. They didn't even get to get outside. And give them perspective that their kids in our history who have been through times like this, and it's okay. You learn, adapt, and then you take from that and move on when life gets back to more normal. Exactly. And your book is awesome. I just finished it a couple of days oh, ago. Thank you. And it is awesome. I've started reading your other book, um, mm -hmm. Joy. Mm -hmm. I did a devotional. And um, it it's good. I've just gotten started into it. And you know, you, you have a lot of 
of great nuggets in both books thank and um, it's really, really good. I want to say thank you for talking with us, giving yeah. us some insights and helping us um, to understand homeschooling a little better because we yeah. all needed a little bit of encouragement and help understanding and navigating these uncharted territory, it, this uncharted territory for so many of us. Oh, it is. It is. Kristen, did you have any questions for me listening to all this? Because when you come from your perspective, it's like it's a whole different world over here. Yeah, it is. It's very overwhelming uh, for me. And I can just imagine uh, for everyone going through it right now, especially, you know, if the kids are bringing home assignments and subjects that, you know, the parents mm -hmm. may not know about, or, you know, how you mentioned, if it's not your, your first language here and you're coming home now with these assignments with your kids, how... Mm -hmm overwhelming and frustrating that can be and I definitely am glad that you mentioned your book because I think that is very um is very good that I'm going to be recommending to my clients and everything Thank you. Too. just um and even the devotional too just kind of to help keep them with a little peace of mind during this mm -hmm. time too um, yeah so. we all need encouragement it, it's different for every family right now and you know find something good in each day because we're finding plenty of negative stuff in each day out there in the media and social media. So look for those little things. Um, I don't know if neighborhoods around you have started this, but neighborhoods in Hickory are putting teddy bears in windows for kids who get to walk through the neighborhood with their parents Aww. and they go on a bear hunt. They can count how many bears they see along the way. And there's neighborhood um, Facebook groups all over that are encouraging them to do that. I've seen hearts in the window for, of our first responders and medical people out there on the front lines. And it's just a great way to find something positive when we're all kind of corralled in our little spaces and can't get out there and do what we're used to. So just seeing that resilience in our country and in these little neighborhoods been such an encouragement to me. Exactly. You know, you mentioned the, um, finding a little bit of encouragement and having just a little bit of encouragement and finding the good. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing gratitude and writing gratitude every yes. morning and starting mm -hmm. my day with that. Mm -hmm. And that seems to brighten the day and the mood every morning. And then mm -hmm. right before I go to bed, just what am I thankful for, for the day? What happened during the day? Just because mm -hmm. there's just been so much doom and gloom. Oh, is, yeah. That's all we've heard. Mm -hmm. And that kind of helps in the day positively too. So anything we can do to lighten the mood and give a little bit mm -hmm. of encouragement. I love the idea of the bears and the hearts. And I think that's awesome. I think I'm going to steal that from you. Oh, go right ahead. <laughs> um, years ago when mine were little, we did a thankful tree and we cut oh. out construction paper leaves and it was fall. And each day we would write things because each person contributed and we stuck it up on the wall and it was a visual to us to see all the stuff that we're thankful for. Awesome. Oh, we could go so many places with that at Easter. Oh my goodness. You could do little cut out Easter eggs. You could put them on windows, walls, doors, so many ways to find encouragement each day and not just focus on the bad stuff. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Fun. We greatly appreciate it and all that you're doing to help and to encourage. You're welcome. Thank you guys for having me and enjoy your day, everybody. Find something good in today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.